Hi everyone and welcome to Adobe APAC Live. My name is Flynn and I'm really delighted to be the host of Adobe APAC Live this afternoon. Um, before we get started, hello Ben Marriott. Hello everyone, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm even better. Yeah, <laughs> happy to be here? I'm very happy to be here, excited to you know, spill some of my secrets. Spill some secrets, I love it. Um, so you're motion designer, mm -hmm. animator, illustrator, yep. all those things, a classic slashy. Oh, classic slashy, yes. Yeah. <laughs> doing lots of things. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to get stuck into a little bit more about what we're going to do today in a moment. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to everyone that's in the chat room. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome new faces and familiar faces. Hey, Tully and Olivia, Justina. It's uh, great to see you all in there. Um, if you'd like to join the chat room and you're at adobeapaclive.com, you can log in. It's really, really fast, really easy. Um, the top right-hand corner, um, just log in there using your Creative Cloud account. If you don't have one, that's okay. You can sign up for free immediately, um, and you can be in there asking questions um, to, to Ben or mm. myself, much more likely Ben, um, <laughs> and uh, about animation, illustration, and this whole process. Absolutely. Cool. So, um, so yeah, again, thanks so much for coming in. So for those that aren't familiar with your work, like me, who's been following your work for a couple of years now, mm -hmm. um, can you tell everybody a little bit about what you do? All right. So I'm a motion designer, which is, you know, a bit of a... An animator and illustrator and designer as well. So I make the stuff, I design it, illustrate it, and then I animate it. So I make it move. And uh, I'm a, a freelance uh, animator at the moment, freelance motion designer, um, mm -hmm. whichever term you prefer. I'm happy with either. Um, so I started in, uh, I've been freelance since February. So I've been out, out of my own, you know, as a little um, motion mercenary. Like I'm doing, <laughs> you know, um, doing hashtag TM, yeah. That's hashtag yours. hashtag yeah. TM. I'll, I'll claim that. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, so I've been doing that for a while. I started um, like uh, studied design at uni, mm -hmm. and then worked as a you know freelance illustrator afterwards, and then got a like some staff positions in video production companies doing uh, illustration and design, mm. and then slowly decided that animation is what I really I really love more than any of those. So mm. it's made that you know my full time full time business now. Very good. Thank yeah, you. that's excellent. Um, and what do you think it is about animation that that made you decide? Okay, you know what? That's that's what I want to do. Um, it's really it's really fun to make. Like I mm. I really find and it has like this little bit of magic, like even I still find with it. Like if I see design illustration, like I think I can kind of imagine like how I might create that. Mm. Or, and then if I see animation, I'm like, oh, that's that's something that's a bit different. It's moving. It's that's the next level. That's yeah, that's next level stuff. And I like yeah, like it's like a bit like magic, like it's a bit like a bit of like a bait and switch. I love like transitions where you're expecting something to happen and then something else happens and just mm. you know more interesting, and that's, yeah, and mainly it was fun to make. I really enjoyed the process. It's really fun. Yeah, yeah cool. Well, you, I mean, your your fondness of it, like, comes out through your work, so it's, like, really fun and exciting. Oh, and great. Often really quirky mm -hmm. and um, pretty cheeky. We've actually got a pretty cheeky example. It's a little cheeky. <laughs> I really, really like it. I love this example that you brought in. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I think we're going to cross to it. I think we have a full version that we're going to have a look at right now. It's an Australian icon. Although the exact recipe remains a tightly held secret, all goon is comprised of three elements, the box, the sack, and the goon. The idea was born on the first fleet by Sir Stanley James Goon, inspired by Australia's oldest drinking vessel, the pouch. Today, goon is enjoyed by Australians of all ages, helping to keep the nation's pride up and perception down. When you consider its incredible cost, Goon is unquestionably Australia's finest, cheapest wine. <laughs> Super cool. Thank you very much. Yeah. So that's a, um, a personal project that I've uh, been working on for like about a year now, yeah. like in my downtime as a freelancer. So a uh, big freelancer, I knew like when I was, um, when I, started going freelance that, you know, I wouldn't be booked every single week of the year. Yeah. So I'm gonna need a project to do in my downtime and something, you know, to show off as much of my skills as possible. So that I wrote and designed and animated everything in that. And I just got that's the final sound mix that I just got back yesterday from my um Capella, Richard uh Templaniza, who did an amazing job with all the sound effects and the original music he composed as well. Oh wow. So that's great. Um, is that another freelancer that works particularly in sound? Uh, yes, I worked with him uh, um, uh, a lot. He, we used to work at the same place where my wife first sort of learned animation. Nice. And he's done yeah, amazing work, so I'd try to, you know, if I can hire him, 
I'm I'm happy to do it. Oh, that's fan- that's fantastic. Um, just a quick shout out to everyone like having a chat in the chat room. Lots of people in there. Um, we we've, we've got a question that we'll answer later, but I just thought we'd jump in and ask. Um, Christine was asking what this you know, um, what uh, what device is best for editing and you've got your laptop here but you have a different system set up at home so maybe we can answer that question yeah for sure yeah. so here I've got my I've got a MacBook Pro it's a uh, uh, mid 2012 um, edition it's so, OG so it's OG so this is, it was the first retina, <laughs> retina one that was a brand new technology at the time uh, but yeah this is pretty old now I don't use this for much uh, After Effects anymore um, I use it for a, like a tiny bit now and then but um, I'm in a pinch, but this is what I used to, to travel with when I'm going places. Mm. But I have, um, when I uh, went freelance, I treated myself, I got a big beefy PC that I built myself. And right. I have like two 27 inch monitors and a big Cintiq next to me. That's so, a Wacom Cintiq. Yes, a Wacom to, Cintiq. That's yeah. my uh, the big tablet that, mm-hmm. I, that I draw on. Um, yeah, so I, I, use a, I use that mainly because you need the screen real estate, like especially in After Effects, there's a lot of panels, so you need to be able to see what you're doing. Yeah, so you've got the timeline, panels, lots of different and there's lots plugins, of plugins sometimes, plugins, which we'll get into. We will. There's lots of stuff to keep track of, so it's yeah. good to have that there. And then you, you have references on the screen to the side and, and your Slack channel or something else yeah. as well. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll keep asking those questions. Quick, keep asking those questions as well um, as we come through, and um, you know, answer them as best as we possibly can. So we're going to show this entire process. We're going to do a um, little bit of sketching, a little bit of Illustrator, mm-hmm. Photoshop, and then onto After Effects. Yes, absolutely. It takes there's a lot of ste- a lot of steps to get to that that final product, and a lot of switching. Let's let's do this. Okay, all let's right. get stuck in. Well, first of all, first always comes the script. Yeah. So I I wrote this script. So I first started it writing it. Um, in I checked my Evernote file. It was created October 24th of last year. So that's how long um, this process is, this project has been um, mm-hmm. in the works. Like by then, it was just an idea of wouldn't it be funny if I made a video about about, about Goon? Yeah. And if it wasn't clear from the video, Goon is a very cheap boxed wine that's very popular in Australia, and many um, many young people have like pivotal experiences with it in their you know early 20s and late teens. So I thought it would resonate with people. It certainly resonates with me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it always brings back memories. Yeah, uh, a lot of those memories have disappeared. Over yes, time. A, lot, a lot of those erased memories. So any yeah. any pieces that I can pick back up is, is worth it. Remember the beginning of the story, but maybe perhaps not the middle or the end. Yeah, great, excellent, good so, subject matter. I like it. Yeah. It's, it's pretty fun. Yeah, thank you. A little fun. Yeah. Um, yeah so then, so the script. Um, so it's uh, started working on the script. And then it was just uh, a bunch of ideas. I was just nodding down in a notepad, and then I started sketching those ideas to see, mm. you know, what had come come to light. So right. You can, so you can. So see you, do you always start out sketching? Um, when you're at a kind of an idea stage, most of the time, yeah, I'll start sketching in in a in a pad just so I know that I'm not tempted to get if I'm on the computer, I get tempted to jump straight into Illustrator or Photoshop or After Effects yeah. to sort of well, what if I just see what it'll look like? Will this work? Mm. But then that tends to compromise the idea because I start making it before the concept's fully formed. Mm. So as much as I can separate that as possible, I like to do that. Mm. So I just started sketching some ideas here. I knew I was going to have to. This time the script wasn't locked, but all I knew was it's going to have a goon box and a goon sack in the video. So deciding how detailed to make the goon box so it's readable as actual goon box and mm. not actually as um, just, a, just, a, just a cardboard box or anything, but not getting too close to the brand so I get sued or yep. infringe on copyright. And then uh, during the, the goon sack as well, just trying to make sure that, you know, it, it reads as sort of shiny metallic because if it's cause essentially just grey, it would appear yeah. as a, a grey blob and working out the shape. So fiddling out those things was um, important first of all and then like I took a break which I must have been working on some project and come back to this a few months later with a script locked and then I have sketches like a really rough thumbnails of the storyboard and you'll notice my handwriting is indecipherable mm-hmm. mainly to encrypt my ideas so they don't go out on the stream it's very clever no it's um, I just do this really fast yeah. so you can see these are so rough this is um, this one here you'll see that's a coat of arms that we'll be talking about mostly throughout this video but yeah, it's really rough there. This is just information that I can use later to translate into Photoshop because mm. I don't, I don't really like spending a lot of time um, on uh, on paper and pencil because mm-hmm. I really find it more comfortable to use Photoshop because I've got an, an undo and I can crop and duplicate and do all those things that would just take more time. So no command, on, uh, no command Z in real life. No is command there. Z. Although I have slightly developed a twitch while I like my hand will do that movement if I. If, I've, I've had dreams where I could, yeah, control Z until I woke up and... That would be wonderful. Mm, one good day. Times. Yeah. yeah, one day. <laughs> Excellent. So that's pretty much uh, the sketching process uh, process done. So that happens. Right. Just getting all the ideas down. So I just got the rough ideas for the frames, like um, 
I knew there was going to be maybe like 10 scenes. So we're going to have just filling up those 10 scenes with ideas, what gags would work and, mm. you know, what wouldn't, just experimenting, getting the, the rough um, sort of composition down. Great. Excellent. Thanks. Okay, so then we get on to the computer portion of the se- of yes. this afternoon. Yes, now we jump into into the tech. Into the tech. So uh, we're going to start out in Photoshop. We will. We'll start up in Photoshop doing the storyboards. Mm-hmm. So I like to work um, with motion design. I think it's important to have like sort of a waterfall process. Okay. Where, especially when working with clients, because this is a self-directed project, there's not as much, you know, uh, consequences if that doesn't happen. But I like to get um, the script script locked, and then I make the storyboards, then I make the assets and texture them, and then do the animation. Mm. Because um, changing your mind um, is becomes a lot is a lot easier to do at this stage in a storyboard than later when everything's animated. Right. So try to make sure um, everything's approved by the client, in this case, you know, myself, before I, before I go on. Mm-hmm. Because it's, I mean, there'll always be changes right up until the very end. Um, so, um, but try to m- minimizing them as much as possible. This is, yeah, this is an important, important step. And we had a question from Justina. I think I called you Christina before, sorry about that. Um, sorry. How, long, how long did the storyboard take you approximately? So I know there was, a, there was like nine months or something oh. from the beginning to the end, but I think she means like how long like actually do, would you typically spend on that sketching storyboard phase and maybe also this phase? No, but just sketching on the paper, I probably spent, that was probably a few, a few hours in, the, in there, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe, like, maybe six hours total. That, that was spread mm-hmm. across months, so there was probably about three sessions there. Right. And that's, um, a lot of that's, stewing in the back of my mind like there's no deadline for this project mm. so I was not in any rush so whenever I had time I'd, uh, I'd get to it um, but I find it's it really helps to have um, space in between the sessions where mm. you can the ideas can brew because if you know if you just have a deadline like I'm going to animate it I'm sorry I'm going to sketch it in the morning middle the assets in the afternoon yeah. you're going to you're only restricted by how good your ideas were in those four hours but if you leave it you know the next morning you've got you know a few more hours to think about it and you might mm. have better ideas so you know I think leaving it until as late as you can to make any concrete decisions. Um, it, it's, it, yeah, it's really, really helpful. A lot of creative people like to work to that deadline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I suppose, yeah. We always say, you know, it's never, nothing's ever finished. It's only due. Right. So, yeah. I love it. All right. So then we get into um, storyboarding. Now, these probably took probably took a day to do these storyboards. Okay. Maybe even longer. It might not look as... Um, Can we zoom in a little bit more? So is yes, this, let's are you sketch, I'm assuming you're sketching this out using your Cintiq at home? Yes, so I have yeah. my Cintiq, so I'm just uh, sketching this out. I'll have my um, reference sketchbook by, by the side. So you don't scan anything in from your notebook, you just No, I have it easier, yeah, because they're really not that refined. <laughs> yeah. It was something really refined and I was really happy with and I really liked, you know, how I got those certain lines. I'll maybe scan that in, mm. but I'm really not precious. Like the sketchbook is just, you know, just for jotting down ideas and concepts. Great. Nothing, nothing in there. Is kind of taking taking with me. Right, nothing's I, concrete. Yeah, if I get precious about that, I tend to you know get really worked up and you know n- nothing gets done because right. I'm worried worried that oh this is going to be final if I'm going to scan this in better make it look right. Cool. So I do that in Photoshop. Um, yeah, just because yeah, it has undo. I can I can change to a white brush, lasso things, select and duplicate, mm. and make things easier. Um, so here I just built made an artboard for every sort of frame of the animation. That you can see and just sort of um, so it's every like major frame I've noticed there's no like annotations in here about movement or anything like that there's no kind of en- there's nothing indicating transitions is this is that typical of your process when you're working with a client um, not so much um, with a client there'd be a lot more descriptions there's normally um, normally there's a script document that's shared with the, the client and the, maybe the studio that you're working with that you'd be a, or if you're giving over a storyboard document I give over these boards in a PDF and underneath I'd have a description of like either saying what the VO is happening at the moment mm-hmm. and then a description. That's the of, voiceover? Yeah, so the voiceover is happening at the moment. Cool. And then, that, uh, is the, that is the limit of my technical proficiency yeah, yeah, when yeah, it comes to emotion, the, so I'm really proud of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the in- industry term. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then there's a description of like, so for here, for this one, I'd have um, the goon, goon box falls down, um, the coat of arms appears, the, um, you know, the, mm. the vines grow and unfurl. And if you, um, I'd like to leave as little in the imagination of the client as possible, like mm. really, over explain, uh, over explain those things. Like it really, it can't hurt because there's often, you know, I think often people like uh, in the, when you're making stuff in the creative industry, you tend to think, well, they'll understand what, what I mean if I just show it to them. But right. that's like, that's a, that's a fool's errand. <laughs> that's not, not going to pay out for you. It's as, not the case. You be as descriptive and be as flowery as, as you can be. Mm-hmm. Like, like, you know, the, the leaves unfall magnificently, something like that. Just, you know, to add, add flavor. To you know, that convince them that oh, they know what they're doing. This is going to look good, mm. you know, rather than just saying you know the coat of arms appears because then I think mm, sounds a bit you know 
a bit boring. Like, sure, yeah. You know, Suddenly, moment, yeah, everything happens. And now they're like, oh, I'm invested in this. I don't want to make changes because <laughs> yeah. it's already it's already been thought about so much. Absolutely. I've got another question, actually, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. Um, just jumping from the, from the chat room. And um, by the way, guys, if, if you're wondering what we're talking about in um, the chat room, if you're at adobeapaclive.com, you can log in using your uh, Creative Cloud account and you can ask us, ask us questions. Um, so we've got a question here. Um, how long did it take you um, to learn how to use Photoshop? Photoshop. Now, Photoshop I've been using since I was 14. Right. So that's, that's 14 years ago. Wow, I think it's like CS two or something. One, yeah, uh, yeah it was CS was the first version. CS, CS. I actually had before Photoshop. I used yeah Macromedia Fireworks before Adobe bought out bought out those. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, um, and I used to make. Oh, I was on on the Lost forum because I was obsessed with the TV show Lost at the time. Oh, wow. Season one, and I, I bought Photoshop so I could make you know. Um, Avatars and like banners that go in your signature, like uh, that, that was how like I, your email signature. Yeah, or like in the forum, you oh, know, you look forum, little right, banner, right, you have right, your right. display picture in your in your forum. So that's I. Where gifts know. began, isn't it? Almost that era. Yeah, kind yeah. of. So I was really, you know, just on the internet making that stuff, experimenting, and just you know, yeah, it's been yeah lots of, of years. So now it becomes mm. like second nature, like all of the, the shortcuts and the, and the keyboards. Like I've cool. grown up with it. Yeah, that's you know. Majority of my, my like half Very my good. life has been with Photoshop. It's in your blood. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go back to the storyboard. Thanks yes. for the question, guys. We'll, we'll get to as many as we possibly can, but we obviously need to get to the animation as well. Yes, let's get to that. <laughs> All right. So once uh, storyboards are done, now here I'm trying to. Most important thing about the storyboards is I want to make do as much of the decision making as possible in okay. here. So it makes the mm. next process easier and the next process easier after that. So I'm just deci- so I'm deciding what the kangaroo, what shape the kangaroo is going to be, how many panels are in the goon box, how detailed it's going to be, where the vines are going to lay, where the, where the grapes are. Great. So when I'm an illustrator, I'm pretty much like not tracing over this sketch, but using it really closely as reference. Mm. And then when I'm an illustrator, um, I'll experiment with the things that are easier to experiment in illustrator. Cool. So let's pop over there now. So here we have, I've just got the um, storyboard on a multiply layer at a really low um, transparency. And then I just go in and sort of trace, like ra- like draw over each element. So, so you're just drawing over this using the pen tool? Yes, using the pen tool. And yeah. I use a, a mouse when I'm in Illustrator, any vector tools when I'm in mouse, uh, when I'm in After Effects or Illustrator. Mm. I find it easier and more precise to use the mouse. Uh, if your preference uses the pen, go for it. Cool. Um, yeah, so I just add in all the elements here and draw them all up here. So that's... That, that was quick. That was quick. <laughs> <laughs> Take a little longer than that. Normally, this probably this probably maybe the longest process. Uh, yeah, maybe some of this time-consuming process. Maybe mm-hmm. I think in the whole thing. Right. Besides, maybe the animation might take longer. But this is you know, maybe the one that looks the it would take less time, but actually takes more. Right. Right. Um, so here um, I've got all these elements drawn, and you'll notice I've got them all separated onto different layers over here. Yes, yeah, so there are a lot of layers. So it's something that we really like to do here at Adobe, particularly on the live stream, is give credit where credit is due and people are labeling their layers. Thank you very much. And grouping everything. So gold star to you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, and everybody great. out there. Um, yeah, it's it's an important an important step. I thought I'd encourage it. If you're making assets for, for an animator, um, if you if you label all your layers and group them properly, that you'll make them very happy. They'll love you. They'll love you. Great. So uh, because I was animating this, I made sure to let to lay, uh, label all of mine. Um, <laughs> Because, yeah, that's just going to make it easier because when they need to, you know, animate the emu or something, that's just, you know, it's all on. It's all on one layer and they can drag it and move it around and it's not going to be a problem. Um, and I've got these separated because I'm going to need to, I'm going to texture them in Photoshop as well. So I have like these goon yellow over here, which is going to be separate because even the goon box is all going to be together. Mm. I'm going to um, have them separated for when I'm texturing them because I, I want to have, I want to texture the yellow color, the yellow, um, the yellow labels on the box with a different color. Fantastic. So, and you'll see, also, I changed the background color here because I originally intended this frame to have a red background, mm-hmm. this pink color. And then uh, because Illustrator just makes it so easy to change colors, I just chucked a blue background on there and thought, you know what? That looks even better than Very I thought. Good. So I just uh, ran with that. And that's that really like that influenced, you know, the, the color palette for the whole whole video, really. Most mm-hmm. of it's on this, on this blue background. I um, just have a couple of questions as well. Yeah, please. Um, um, so Justine was asking, how do you get such uh, clean, thin lines? I think she might have been referring to um, the storyboarding portion. In the storyboarding here. Um, yeah, because I was a little bit slower getting to that question. Ah, uh, no problem. Uh, well, I don't know if my lines are that, I, uh, I don't know if my lines are that cl- clean and thin. I used, um, 
I use the circular brush tool, the basic with a pressure sensitivity. Mm-hmm. I run I like fancy brushes uh, in Photoshop. We'll get to those later, but when I'm sketching. I just use you know the basic brushes, and it just I I go over my li- lines a lot. So this is probably maybe a final pass. Like I maybe sketch it out, mm. and then make that a really low transparency and sketch over the top. Um, I saw Bill Hope doing that in his live stream as well. Like i like doing iterating over the top of things just makes it makes it easier. Mm. And knowing when you're sketching roughly there, this isn't going to be the final thing. There's going to be another layer on the top anyway. So any mistakes I make here, there's no consequences of. I can fix it up later. Always got command Z. Always got command Z. We've got another question from Osama as well here. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have to get approval from the client first in sketching, in the sketching step, before going into Illustrator? Um, yes, ideally. Ideally, I'm not touching, making anything um, until the storyboard's approved. Uh, it's important to have separately uh, style frames, though, which uh, are important. Mm-hmm. Which, so that's just a, um, a still of what the final animation would look like. So you can say to the client, here are the storyboards, and here is one final frame of, the, of, what, yeah, of what, um, what the animation will look like, so they can mm-hmm. imagine it. Um, sometimes they'll want a motion test, so where you'll animate a short scene, so you'd run through this whole process by the one shot for one still image, right. which is sort of the after the texturing process, or you'll animate a short sequence. Um, uh, yeah, so that, that's important to, but kind of that's almost done maybe before even the storyboarding stage when you're maybe pitching a style to the client you'll say here are some examples i found here's one i've made but um yeah it dep- really depends on, on right. the client and the project and their familiarization i guess with the process and yeah, if that's it's right. an agency or a client that might not always work with creative people that sort of stuff yeah but as much as you mm. as much as you can show them and get approved before you do anything else is always is always the best. that's always a tip definitely yeah. get your stuff signed off yes. um, great question guys so yeah keep, thank you keep them coming mm-hmm. all right so I think um, that's all we need to do in, uh, in Illustrator. We've drawn mm. all the pieces. I just used the, yeah, the pen tool. Um, nothing fancy here, really. And then, uh, then we move on to um, Photoshop. So I just export this as a, as a PSD, uh, open it up. So just the whole file, just all the layers, you just save it as just a regular old PSD? Yep, yeah, I think you just get a file ex- export and export as. I give the option for, for, for PSD, mm-hmm. Photoshop PSD. And then, uh, yeah, you're good to go. Perfect, that was easy. Mm-hmm. So I'll import it into uh, Photoshop. Here's one I prepared earlier. Nice. So here, oh, let me get rid of because sneaky layers from before. All right. So here we are in Photoshop. So this is how it comes in. You'll see on the right, I've got all the layers that I had in Illustrator come in as either layers here or as uh, groups. Mm-hmm. So I've just gone and color coded them uh, because I've color coded the yellow ones, um, the areas that I want to have texture, and the purple ones that I don't. That's just so I can see at a glance. Right. Where I'm up to. And is that is that like a color system that you've you set up and that you use all the time or is this unique to this project? Um, I don't use like a specific I don't have a universal sort of color system for this. Right. In After Effects, I kind of have some uh, some sort of tricks, like I have all of my alpha mats and luma mats. I color code them purple so I can know whatever project I open up, the purple layers are gonna be alpha mm. mats. This is that kind of whole like like helping your future helping future Ben yeah, future understand ben. what past Ben was up to. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um yeah, like, and that's even more essential in After Effects when you've got like more and more layers and mm. things are moving at different ends of the timeline. We're you, building up to complexity here. Yeah, this, yeah. This of waterfall course. approach mm-hmm. is yeah, happening. So it's going to get a lot more complex. So if you can <laughs> minimize that now mm. and make it easier, that's, yeah. Or, yeah, that's even better. Cool. Very good. All right. And we've got a, a sneaky color palette over here on the left. That's just the colors I'd like to use. I know you can use Adobe Color Libraries, which I've only learned about, you know, just recently. So maybe I should be using that in the future to make mm. things easier. But I'll just use this to um, use the eyedropper tool to let select the colors. So it's uh, really easy. All right, so we'll go through in texture. And I want to texture using um, using clipping masks. Now, I'm going to use these brushes. Now, these brushes come from True Grit Texture Supply, which is a, a company started by an Australian illustrator called Andrew Faircloud. Yeah. They're based in LA at the moment. Mm, pardon me. Okay. <laughs> so drink some water. I can do the shout. I can do a shout out for Kindred Studios. Um, yeah. So it's a brush, a brush set. So we talk about um, Carlty Webster's brush set that that, can't, that ships with Beautiful with brushes. Adobe, which which are amazing, which you you, you spoke about before that you have used as well. Mm-hmm. And and then obviously it's really easy to add in any third party brushes. And these are what were they? Gritty grit textures. I can't remember. Yeah. What they, oh, these are called like true. Uh, uh, true Grit? Oh, True Grit Textual. That's the name of the company. These are right. like uh, green shaders, I believe. Mm. Uh, there's a bunch of them. I bought a pack. You get a lot of them. You get half tones and yeah. all sorts. But anything, if you want your work to look distressed, go there. They have their brushes, textures, all sorts of stuff to make it look 
old timey or you know. It's all happening. Absolutely. Very good. So so I really love this one. It's like it's got this really grainy, sort of noisy effect here. Mm. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna use this color as an example. So ooh, I've drawn that on the completely wrong layer. Alright, so I'll make a new layer with the clipping mask. Draw where I want shaded. So I'm gonna select this darker gold colour and I'm gonna shade the bottom right of this star. So I'm gonna shade around here. And when I have my layer selected over here, I'm going to hold Option and click, and that layer is only going to apply the effects to that layer below. Very cool. Should we zoom in a bit just to make sure that we can... We can zoom in real close. Everybody so. playing at home can see. Yeah. yeah, so they can see that layer there. And then I'm going to create a new clipping mask. I normally attach it before I draw, and then I'm going to select the white, you see a little, and just do this white shading on the top left. Cool. So now you can see, just like, it just gives it, you know, that extra bit of, you know, Pop and polish and detail. Yeah, you know. and obviously even from a distance, you can see it has like a lot more depth. Yeah, it just adds, adds production value as well. That's always trying to look for little areas to make it look more expensive. Production value. Yeah, that I know. It sounds really you know weird to say it like it's you know this is content that we're creating to, and adding production value to it. But uh, um, Bastien, I um, hope I'm not. I hope I'm saying that name correctly. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, has one for you. Yeah. So essentially, Illustrator is the create point, while Photoshop is the editing point. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd say that's yeah. Pretty true. Like all mm. the assets I build in Illustrator, like, like yeah, I'd say maybe because I'm sketch like doing the storyboarding for sure. That's like creating the the concepts and deciding everything. But yeah, I'd say that that's pretty fair. Mm. And like sometimes some projects I'll create just in Photoshop if I'm if I don't want this sort of geometric look and I want it to look really um, rough. Yeah, I'll, I'll just uh, draw it by hand, hand in Photoshop. But most of the time I'm, I'm doing it in Illustrator and then into, into Photoshop. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. For, thanks for the question. No worries. And I've got this sort of uh, white layer on a separate clipping mask because these are gonna, when I put this into After Effects, they're all gonna be on separate layers inside pre-comps. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to maybe animate a shine on this star, I just grab this layer and then I like move it down vertically. If I do that, you know, fast enough, it'll look like a little little shimmer. Mm. You know, just little areas, you know, give up myself so freedom. That, that that layer, which is now which is currently called layer six, is layer gonna come six. across through to so you, and you can still continually edit that. Yep. Edit so, the edit the positioning so it gives that effect. Yeah. Cool. So everything that's a separate layer in Photoshop will be imported as a, a separate layer. Great. So that I'll have it'll have a pre-composition called star and have uh, in that pre-comp star layer 5 and layer 6 both as transparency layers which are like clipping masks in um, mm. After Effects so I can just move them around and do everything I need there like delete them, darken them, change them, add more layers if I need to. Fantastic. Because yeah. um, and that brings up like one thing that's important is um, that I find is making files as non-destructive uh, right, yeah. um, uh, as, as possible. So being able to like edit them in the future as much as possible is um, really handy for when the client comes back and says, oh, we want all the colors, we want the colors to be blue. Mm. You can just, you know, use an adjustment layer there. Or we don't like, we don't like this, um, we don't like the shading on the star. Now, if I had just drawn this all on one or a couple of layers, mm. I'm going to have to, you know, re-import that star or draw it all again. Yeah, and go do the back things. so many, so so many steps. So, yeah. but if they just wanted to move the star, I can just you know, delete that layer. All right, we don't have as much shadow on there now. Mm. Now they, you know, now everyone's happy. Everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. Excellent. Great. All right. Now, should we do a little more texturing in here, or should we go straight into After Effects? How are we doing? I, I think, um, I think we go straight into After Effects. I think we do it. What do you say? Absolutely. It's the, right. the same process for everything else. Just clipping mask. Colors. Yeah, and we can jump back if shade. anyone if anyone in the chat room thinks we need to jump back a little bit later. I mean, we could probably do that, but yeah, let's get on to the actual animation portion. Absolutely. Now, exporting for After Effects, uh, you don't really need to do anything special to Photoshop. After Effects reads Photoshop files really easily. Like I said, everything will just come through as a separate layer. So I'll pop over to After Effects and we'll go through that process now. Because cool. a couple of tick boxes you do have to tick in After Effects. So obviously, true? this is one that is this is it. But we're going to show that importing process as well. Like yes, we'll show the importing yeah, process yeah. as if you're doing it. Also, so I'm going to select over here. Here's my project panel, which mm -hmm. has all my folders of my assets, and then I have my sequences of what scenes I've got down here. Very important, to, you know, keep it uh, th this part, um, you know, layered and structured as well. There's lots mm -hmm. of process where keeping it organized is important, but this I think is probably the most important part to keep organized because if you're handing it off to another animator and all your comps are just in one folder, same as your assets. Mm. And I've worked with animators that have done that before. Oh, wow. it, it is a nightmare to make yep. changes to those. So if I can it's see like a here, PSA yeah. here. Now, if someone reads this, it just says, oh, PS imports. That's where his Photoshop files are, mm -hmm. so we can see. So I'm just going to select that folder. So it'll import straight into there. I'm going to select File, Import, a file. You can press Command-I. You can even drag and drop if you like. Then you get this. Uh, um, then I'm going to select. 
um, Goon Finish PSD, and you can put it as either footage or composition. We want composition retain layer sizes. So if you import it as footage, it'll import it like you're importing, you know, video footage or like a JPEG, and you just get one you know, one flat image. Right. Where this okay. is you, you it's compos you'll put it as a composition, and it'll retain the sizes of the layer. Great. So click open, and we're going to get a little reminder as well whether we want to merge into footage. So there's no editable layers, layer styles. So then over here, we have that Photoshop document. This is a more finished one with all the textures on there. Okay. But you'll see all the layers, um, all the all the layers down here, all the layers I had in Photoshop. These ones that are this um, sand color. They all exist down the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, they all exist down here. So this is where your timeline exists. So that's a list of seconds. So that's the duration of how long, what's going to happen there. And then this is just like the layer view. And um, yeah, so these are um, sand colored ones. They are pre-composition. So inside those, we've got the goon. And in here, it's just the goon section. And then we've got the goon yellow. And you're just double clicking to go into the. Double clicking to navigate. Goon, yeah. And then we can see all the layers we've got. So it's going deeper and deeper into the layer structure. That's right. And yeah. to get to get uh, back out, I'm going to press tab. And it's going to bring up this little view. It's called the flowchart. Mm -hmm. And this gets handy when you've got lots of stuff buried deep, deep within layers and compositions. Mm. So just to navigate, I can know that it's got the current layer I'm in. So I was in goon yellow. I've gone up to the goon, which also has these other layers. Then I'm going to the goon board spin, which is the top layer for here. Perfect. I've got everything. That's great. Before we start getting into any animation, mm -hmm. it's been it's been half an hour since we've seen the animation. So why don't we take another look with fresh eyes? Yeah, let's. Um, we can throw to that. Yeah. And Do you yeah. have it on your desktop, or should we bring it up? Uh, I can I can play it from here. Yeah. Why don't we just bring it up on the desktop this time? All right. Uh, let's see. This is the one. Let's preview it. So. Here we go. Cool. Feel like we're going to get more of an appreciation for everything that's happening. <laughs> yeah, here. there's a lot of it. Like, I think mean, good animation starts like long before the animating starts. Right. Yeah, like having a plan and you know, a strategy before you go in. It is. A, there is a real subtlety to animation as well, like which we'll get into. And I've I've seen sort of as we we're talking about this, these little subtle things that that you, you might not notice as a average viewer, mm -hmm. um, but I think obviously over the short amount of time, 30 seconds or 55 seconds or whatever it is, like really adds to the, the thought of, oh wow, that was really cool. Yeah, they like, yeah, I think what, like a lot of the little details are what really makes animation really, really, really good. Like when I'm watching animations like on, online, it's like the Vimeo has, you can pause and scroll frame by frame. So oh. I'll, I'll see a transition, I'll go, whoa, whoa, pause it. How do they do that and scroll back and like, oh, they just, you know, they just cut there or they had this little cell transition. Mm. And just those, those little touches that, you know, really, you might not see, but you, you kind of feel. Like yeah, you know, absolutely. Really, you explain it. Um, yeah, they really add, add, add to the story and just add, you know, flavor and, you know, absolutely. really, yeah, yeah detail cool. to it. Fantastic. All right. right. So let's go back to, um, uh, well, I'll go back to the one I've created earlier, that composition. But so the first thing I do is like in Photoshop, I'm gonna label the label um, uh, label the color label all of these all of these layers. So I'll tend to select if I got this goon layer, I'm gonna just click down here and I'm gonna select fuchsia. So I've got a nice bright color. So I know um, I know um, just looking at a glance, you know, if I've got this layer over here, I go oh. Just looking down, I can see oh about 12 seconds in this goon this goon layer will appear and start doing its thing. That's just colorizing the layer. For That's reference. just colorizing it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no changes to like. Actual changes, that's all cosmetic, mm -hmm. just to make it easier for you to view at a glance. Mm. But it really makes it easier when you've got lots and lots of layers. We have a question which I know you have the answer to because we spoke about it earlier because I had the same question, so very okay. intelligent question. Um, <laughs> where did you get the voice for recording um, of, the, of the woman who was talking? Oh, about the stuff? voice I've got, I, I, I found it on, online. There is, um, there, uh, there's this website you can go to where it's um, like voice recording artists, is, they have their profiles. Mm. And then, and you, um, yeah, like this is my first time hiring one. Um, I like hiring, hiring one myself online. I've worked and directed them at my previous staff positions. But uh, this one, yeah, I cont contacted her. Like, you know, they have a little demo reel, like an animated award of them saying different things. And mm. that one was really good. And then I, I um, you know, I sent her the script. I sent her a temp video that I recorded, an animatic of me. So this is the pace, this mm. is the pronunciation. Yeah, and then um, I her and I give her notes. Like the note to her, I said, it's, I said, um, read it as if you were delivering a documentary about fine wine on the ABC. That was the documentary. Right. That, that was the, that was the sort of direction. Like you know, I wanted to sound really, um, like a really really straight read. Like all the comedy is going to come from it being you're saying absurd things. Mm. And there's absurd things happening on screen. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. A, thanks for the question. Yeah, but it's, it's really um, yeah, that's yeah, great to know, and it's really a lot easier 
than you'd expect and not really that expensive at all. Mm. But you should, you know, putting good money into the sound design and voiceover really makes an animation feel more professional. I have heard that from other motion designers as well. It, it tends to be something that people... It, it tends to be a corner that people will cut, like, a, a lot of the time, yeah. I think, but but actually how big an impact it can have. Yeah, one thing you can tell, like, and that's in with um, any sort of like, move films. Like, you can tell student films, like, the main key is the sound, the, the sound, oh, the, right. the quality sound, because you, <laughs> you don't have, like, cameras. You can get, you know, they'll play, that's your first purchase, you get a nice camera, mm. but, like, someone who's a filmmaker won't spend all the money to get a nice mic and a, a nice mixer and all those things, because, you know, it's not that important, but, you know, you can tell when something's the extra level. Right, has, you that know. Uh, attention to detail stuff that mm. we were we were talking about before. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. All okay, right. Great. Keep the questions coming. Yeah, please. All right. So uh, let's jump into here. So here's one, this layer that I've kind of animated the first half of that scene. Let me, let me zoom out a bit so you can see all of it. So we've got this goon animating. Got the goon box flying in. And then the rest of it's just static. Cool. Now, observant people will notice that I'm using a really large canvas size here. Yeah. So this is because I want to use this video as a one by one. And like 1080 by 1080 mm-hmm. video on Instagram. I want to export it as a 16 by 9 video for Vimeo and YouTube. Okay. And I want to import it as a vertical video to use on Instagram. Which are stories. all completely, completely different aspect ratios. All completely different aspect ratios. Mm. So I found that, you know, clients would often ask for a video to be trimmed to different sizes, mm. uh, but they would often do that really late in the process after the design had been done. So mm. it's really hard to, you know, unless by coincidence, Th- those all fit in the same way because mm. if you're cropping it to one by one you're losing like more than a third of the information that you've, if you're just cropping off a 16 by 9 video mm. so for this I, I planned that from the beginning so I knew like you know Instagram and Facebook are probably where it's going to be get the most views mm. and then Vimeo the next like that's where most people are going to see it so I'm going to um, design for those first and then um, but design for you know be mindful of all of them at the same time so right. then at the end so I'm essentially I'm animating this whole uh like 1920 by 1920 space and then just cropping to the certain size. So you can see I've got my guides up here. So I've got this little square where most of the action's happening. Well, in these first two scenes, all the action's happening here. Mm. But in some of the other scenes, um, stuff spills out onto the side, which you won't see in the one by one, but it's not essential. So anything essential happens in the middle. Mm. And if it happens to go off the side. So it's like a version there. of bleed happening. It's exactly, yes. It's like a video version of bleed. That's a great way to, great way so to put that's, it. So that's the print graphic designer yeah. <laughs> coming yeah, that's out. Yeah, exactly right. And this is a really a pretty new problem that I've had to solve. Like, I've done this for a pr- few projects this year, mm. but, like, yeah, it's only recently that all the clients want I mean, formats. Ben, you and I were joking kind of a little bit about how, like, yeah, technology is changing mm-hmm. constantly, and there's, there always seems to be these things that pop up and then new systems. I, I remember when retina, stre- retina screens came in. Oh, yes. And, um, you know, we were designing for iPhone 3Gs, mm-hmm. um, and then I think six months later or something or a year later or whatever um retina display display came out um Mm -hmm. and then responsive design was a solution to that we used to do mobile websites like all sorts of yeah like things change so 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 quickly Mm. um it can often be hard to keep up yeah it can often be hard to keep up so yeah this is a top tip to keep on track of that i'm sure in the future we'll have a new aspect ratio everyone will be watching things on their triangle device that we're gonna have to design for eventually so yeah very good i've got a couple of questions before we keep going deeper um, so, uh, Justina was asking um, how the shapes are so clean, um, which oh. some, some of the people in the chat have started to answer, but the, uh, I'm assuming the vector art. Yeah, that's just vector art and illustrator. Like, they just, they cut, like, that's, that's Photoshop, illustrator. Yeah, they just come out uh, clean and the vector shapes so that you can infinitely zoom. It's mm. not showing it, it's not saving it as individual pixels, it's just, you know, saving it as math. So, if I flick to the Y view, you can see it's just data about what, um, what angles the size line up so you can yep. zoom in infinitely uh, and you'll see that see it like that so yeah okay. crisp lines um go to illustrator that'll they'll they'll help you out illustrator's got you back um got another quick we've got a couple questions here so let's yeah. uh, let's do some of them um so keelan asks ben how many hours does an animation project take you um from scratch to a finished scratch. product this one took i'd say maybe th- probably three to four Weeks. So that's fifteen. To, let's say fifteen. Let's say it was seven. Let's say eighteen days. Mm. And let's say twenty. For that. So this took me twenty. So like days. work days, kind of work thing? days. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. So I'm working yeah. eight hours, eight to ten hours maybe, on these. This one is a bit different. Normally, I'll I'm booked for an animation gig and I'll work you know 
they'll book me for three weeks. I work for three weeks on that project. Now the end, it's done. So mm. I know in that time. That's this, like a clock in, clock out kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, this is how right? many, they've yeah. paid for this many of my hours um, that I can, you know, that I can mm. work for. Mm. Um, but for this, it didn't have a strict deadline. So I wasn't like um, tracking time as uh, as diligently. But yeah, it took, um, but, uh, yeah, three, three to four weeks. So mm. how many hours is that? That's, you know. So we've got 50 hours a week. That's, you know. I'm bad at doing math on camera. That's two, almost 200 hours. <laughs> yeah. So I'd say probably maybe, uh, between maybe 170, 180. So and it gets to, up there, yeah. So, yeah, it's a lot of a lot of time for this is 50 seconds. So and, like working on something funny is important yeah, if, you, if, if you're self-driven work. That's right. And if, like, if I'm making personal work, I'm not enjoying it. What's, what's the point, <laughs> really? Yeah. But, yeah, it takes a lot of hours. And it's, you know, thinking about it, I don't feel like it's a lot of hours. I could have done a lot of stuff in those hours. But, you know, so it takes a lot of... A lot of um, commitment to do something like this, and this is the mm. largest scale personal project that I've done. So, right. So, yeah. So uh, that's why I think breaking it down helps. Like, oh, I'm only storyboarding for two days. I just can handle two bit. days. Yeah, a little bit of time. Yeah, someone says, yeah, you're going to do this for 200 hours. I'm like, well, no, I don't, no. I don't <laughs> want to do that. No. <laughs> and last question, then we'll move on, and we'll grab some more questions. Um, do you design? Do you des- uh, do you design them as your canvas size in After Effects, so 1080p for instance, or do you design? at a large scale right off the bat. Ah, perfect question. I design at a larger scale off the bat. So we mm. talked about, um, uh, so essentially what I do is I make, uh, I had a, like a 1080 by 1080 canvas. I think I had a 1920 by 1920 canvas in Illustrator. Mm. And then I export that to Photoshop at 150 DPI. So that kind of doubles the size, mm. I think. Um, maybe I may have started with a 200 by 200. 2,000 by 2,000 canvas in Illustrator. Right. So now I, when I've imported it into After Effects, you can have a see this is 4,000. Uh, by 4,000 pixels. So this is like a 4K square. So this is twice as big as it needs to be. Mm. So this is... And why do you do it that way? If I need to scale something, it doesn't get um, blurry. Really. Like if I want want something to be twice as big, um, it won't be twice twice as degraded. Yeah, that's really the only reason. Mm. So when I I crop it into a main comp, all these comps are, you know, 50% size. Some of them I put a little tiny bit smaller I think you know it works out a bit smaller than I need them to be or a bit mm. bigger so I can adjust it there but yeah um, that's I that's just a habit um, I have uh, many people running when I used to work in do a lot of illustration in print people are like oh this is uh, this is great can I get an A4 print can we get the A2 version and I'm like uh, there is I'm, no A2 version no this is <laughs> I made an A1 a, a um, an A3 version yeah that's gonna that's yeah yeah so running into that problem a lot I just made you know I'll make them bigger, and then mm. it's it. You can go smaller. You can't go bigger, really. Right. really. Unless you're, if you're working with straight vectors in After Effects, um, that's no problem. You can continuously scale those. Yeah, that was like going to be my follow up. My follow up questions because you've added the texture in, so that step in between to yeah. add the texture and detail. Yeah, you don't want to be scaling up pixels. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's individual why. pixels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great, great questions. We're going to get to some of these other ones as well because we are going to we're going to touch on transitions as well, Thomas. So your question might be answered in the process. If not, we'll come back to it. Yes. So let's hold your horses, let's, Thomas. We'll, we'll get there. You he's he's just excited. <laughs> I'm excited. I understand. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Let's get into. Let's animate. Um, so we're going to this process and let's animate some of these vines coming in. Now, if we go back to the video, so the vines I think really sell this sort of transition here. So we're looking for the vines here. So looking for the vines. Right. So you'll notice if you scrub past, this is what where I talk about, you know, the magic of the, the magic of the animation. What mm. I really like is that, you know, if you scrub by frame by frame, <laughs> magic, we go from this frame to here, where we've got essentially the emus and the kangaroo, they're already there. But and then the things grow within a few frames. But like that seems like a really, really jumpy cut. Mm. To me, when you see it like this, that's why I like to scroll scrub in Vimeo and go, how do they do it do that? Mm. But to make them make it appear like, you know, that's all part of this one seam- seamless movement. You, like you have to have other other elements that you know display that. So there you don't really notice it because it's like it lands with this impact of the goon sack and those things flow on. Mm. So you're like, oh, that's just the middle section where things run its fastest before it, you know, you know, un- unfurls. Yeah, really. And I think the um, the vines are help help with that the most. So to do that, I've got these. I'm going to focus on these this bottom right corner of the vines right here. I'm going to solo these layers by selecting the um, solo button over here. It just mm-hmm. makes only those layers visible, which is a very handy tool in After Effects. And um, let's go and add a trim paths. I'm going to add trim paths here. I might have another one. I'll just get rid of there. So trim paths essentially determines how much of this uh, vector line is, is drawn on. Right. Um, so I'm going to select. And also, I should mention, these um, these vector elements that I've got here, 
of the vines. I they aren't from the Illustrator file because they that imports as a, a raster file. Okay. Um, as bitmaps as pixels. So these I've imported from Illustrator. Now I use a plugin called Overlord, which you can find on like battleaxe.co, which essentially mm-hmm. means you can push vectors from Illustrator into After Effects, like you can copy and paste. So it's right. really easy. Or um, um, I mean that plugin's great. It's worth the money. I think it's like forty US dollars. But um, you can if you just import an Illustrator file, you can right click any layer that's a vector file, and you can say create uh, create shapes and vector layers. Right. And that'll um, yeah that that'll get you to this place. The, the plugin just makes it a little bit quicker. And mm. if, you know you got where you can shave off the minutes and seconds. If you're working on a project for nine months, that forty dollars start, starts to yeah. make a lot of sense. And then plugins, I think we're like, oh, it's, it's money. I don't want to spend. Money. It's digital. It's it doesn't exist. It's not real. But then yeah. you realize, oh, at my my hourly rate's this, and if I'm saving myself, my myself is of two hours of making this asset. You've already made it. Yeah, yeah. more than enough. Made it yeah, back, if I'm you sure. think about it in scales of your time versus mm. what you what you're actually paying for, because you're just paying for bits and bytes. Mm. It doesn't sound that exciting. All right, so here. So I'm just gonna with the trim paths. I always forget what the start and the end sort of mean. So I, you know, so you see I scrub through here. It's got this line. I'll zoom in a little closer. It's got this line growing and shrinking when I move this here. But that's doing it in the wrong order. So I'm gonna try and start. And find a lot of After Effects. You know, oh, that's what I want here. This growing from the left and growing to the right. With After Effects, it's a lot of trial and error. Trying something. You know, that didn't work. Let's try something else and see if that works. So I think. Learning After Effects is a lot about learning the, a different toolkit of, sort of solutions to work with, um, like a little, a little to- toolkit of um, solutions to problems that you're likely going to occur. Mm. Trim paths is a reasonably common one. It's one of the probably when you start out, it's like, oh, this is this is really cool. I get to just, I've made a vector animation. I want all the lines to draw on. It's really easy to do that. Mm. So here, I've just added keyframes. Here, so it'll it'll grow to the right, and now we're going to add some easing. I'm using this other plugin called Motion 2. So I'm click this, and this is going to add some some easing there. So an easing is um, like it's also known as a slow in and slow out, which is one of the um, seven principles of animation. Mm-hmm. Um, we spoke about that. Who, who we spoke invented about that. this? It was invented by the the um, old Disney the Disney crew back in the day, back in the twenty twenties, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah, this was way before, maybe before Snow White came out. Long, long time ago. Right. There's a great book called Illusion of Life, which explains all of this. And look up on YouTube um, principles of animation, and they explain all the principles clearly. There's like slow in, slow out, mm. appeal. I won't be able to name any more than that. And yet. five so, others. Yes, and then five <laughs> others. Um, and that's about so um, slow in, slow out, or as easing as the terms used in um, After Effects, mm-hmm. is about um, the the way things naturally um, accelerate and decelerate as they move. So if so, you're running from one end of a room to another. You won't just have the same consistent pace when right. you start and when you end. You'll um, start from having um, no speed, and you'll accelerate to your maximum speed, and then towards the end you'll decelerate. Certain things move in um, different ways, but generally things uh, move like that. So there's going to be slower acceleration at the beginning and end. Great. So here I've got this deceleration at the end. I, at the beginning it starts at its fastest speed, so it's going to be really fast and then really slow, because we've got the the drop from that the goon box sort of comes from the top. That's kind of the slow in already of this process. Mm-hmm. So this sort of slow out, it's, you know, I'm kind of seeing that as the one complete movement, which I think is why that really ha- that what might be a harsh cut to the um, kangaroo and the emu doesn't feel so harsh because it, you know it's in the middle of all the action when everything's happening and everything's right. as fast as so it just seems natural. So we've got all those flowing in. Now plugins like this, I kind of tend to say to suggest people stay away from these plugins, as, stay away as long as you can because. Um, <laughs> Not like as long as you can. They're really helpful. I use them every single day with every project because it makes things easier. But um, uh, like you tend, to, I found I, t- I found I found that I tended my work tended to get um, uh, had a repetitive look when I used these plugins because like all my easings, all the speed of everything, mm. um, I found really looked sil- similar. And um, it's not until like, I really started getting really into the gr- the graph editor, which is um, a different view of this, where you can see. Acceleration, deceleration, that it really works harder to get you know more specific and niche and really right. c- come together better. But okay. this is a really great starting off point if you just really want to quick get an ease in there, and it's going to su- suit most of the projects most of the time. Okay. And we just need to if we just copy this effect, by Command C or Control on the PC, and and paste that effect to all these layers. They're all going to draw on at the same time. 
what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to stagger those a little so they come out naturally. So you're staggering each of the little, uh, you know, the secondary branches, yep. I suppose? Yes, that's right. To come out. That's So I want them to come out at the same time that this line you know, passes them. So that one's going to come out a little earlier there. And then where does this one start? That one starts there. So yeah, about where my playhead is. And this other one, yeah, around there. So now if I play them all back, that looks That's natural. Cool. There we go. Um, the magic. So we got a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. um, so Thomas, we'll answer your question. Um, yeah, so how about um, how do you go about planning transitions between scenes? Ch planning transitions, uh, there's sort of, it's good to plan those before you've designed your elements, but not always, I'd say. Like, mm. if you want it to be, I find if you plan too much of the animation, you can lose the spontaneity and the fun in creating it. So you don't want to get rid of that um, completely. But obviously, if, if it's a client project, you want as, you know, maybe as little, not as little spontaneity, but if it's as, you know, you've got to get it done, you should plan it ahead and just be executing. So the last right. stage is just, you know. It's a little bit more formulaic little. when it's like a client brief. A little more. But this is a personal project. I can be a bit, a little more um, flamboyant where they're like, you know, oh, I'll figure out what the background color is later. Because mm. a few of these transitions I hadn't figured out um, exactly. I knew this one because I knew, like, I've got a goon box. Uh, jump like the storyboards. Like we've got the goon box here, and the goon box has to en end there. So I just think about how's it going to end there. So I have this little bounce. What if it um, lowers a bit, and this sort of it flings the goon box up, and it lands there. Mm. Uh, and then I've got the goon box here and, again. And because I'll note in this storyboard, the um, goon box isn't pouring um, the. No, it's not. So I made that change in uh, Illustrator. So here you can see mm. it's very flat, and I have this line there. But then once I got into Illustrator. I, I realize they're pouring it. They're yeah. pouring it. So I just grab that asset that I drawn straight. And go, oh, if I tilt this, it looks like the kangaroo is pouring it. That adds a little bit. Of the emu is not helping at all. Emu is not helping. Well, emu has no arms. I thought like, no, people are like are people going to look at, like it's not holding anything. But like it's doing that on on a on a like coat of arms. So you know, emu is pulling back together. That's true. He's not even holding the holding the shield. I never considered no, that before. No, You're right. He should have it in his beak or like nestle under a <laughs> <laughs> nestle. just under a wing. Yeah. Very good. Um, great. Great question. Uh, I got one from Matthew F. Um, do the Photoshop files uh, maintain their shape layers when bringing into After Effects Ooh, and I'd, scale like a vector? Uh, I, I don't think so. I, uh, I, I don't believe so. Um, mm. I believe I'm not because I imported these straight from. I haven't really used needed to use that functionality. I'm right. In, no, I mean Photoshop. I mean Illustrator. Wait, back to Photoshop. Um, so in the Photoshop layer, so there. Let's open the wine box. Yeah, so these are importing from Illustrator. They're in Photoshop. They're not even vec the vector layers there. These are um, raster images, I believe. Yeah, okay. so they're not vectors in there. Yeah. But if you if you were to draw like a rectangle with you know, the rectangle tool tool in Photoshop, I'm pretty sure you can maintain that in right. Just effects. as long as it's not rastered. I, I think so. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm not certain. You can definitely like convert text from Photoshop into in After Effects, but you can't in Illustrator. So. Cool. And and one more question, and we'll, and we'll move, move back on to our regularly scheduled programming. Of course. Um, uh, Livia asks, she's never used After Effects before. Um, can you draw straight onto it, or do you have to import every element? Absolutely not. You can draw straight into it. So you've got your pen tool up here. you got... Um, All your familiar kind of tools that you might be familiar with. you got your with. lips tool, so you mm -hmm. can draw, draw yourself an ellipse. Draw yourself a pen tool. Like, it, it does, it's not as robust as Illustrator, so but you can get your main shapes mm -hmm. and, you know, edit them like you would in Illustrator, but, you know... You're dealing with you're competing with all the other real estate and tool tools right. you have in After Effects. Whereas, Ill may, yeah, I recommend doing that in Illustrator. If it's a simple simple shape, you can get away with it. Or, or if you're more comfortable, uh, work in After Effects. It's the same tools, but yeah, you certainly can. Great, excellent. Thanks for the question, guys. We'll get back to because I think we'll see another animation. Yeah, element. Let's, let's go with another element. So I'm going to unshy these layers, and we're going to work with um, this little. Um, this little grape character here. So I've got my grape mm -hmm. composition there. So I've got the grape, I've got this called grape flop. And I've I've freeze framed it here. So just for the purposes of this demonstration. So you can see the actual No, hang on. Grape time. Ah, disable time remapping. Alright. Now ah, I see what I've got here. So within this grape precomp, so let's just solo uh so it's essentially drilled down into the yeah, so into the bunch of grapes. So this is the bunch of grapes. Mm. So I initially, I had the grapes 
thing like the grape is going to fall out like like this. So if we go up to the previous comp in the flowchart, as this line comes out, oh, I'll I'll move that a bit further back so it matches up with the line. As this as this sort of branch lead gets to the end, the grape sort of flops out. Mm. And while making that, now this is just done with I open my with the scale and rotation, so it gets it's a bit smaller and then it rotates a bit and sort of um, um like floats a little in the wind. And it comes a little bit closer to us, it seems, with yeah. the, because it's increasing in size, so it adds a little bit of depth and yep. shadow and stuff. That's yep. right. And then I thought, uh, wouldn't it look... So this is something I didn't plan in Photoshop Illustrator. Mm -hmm. I thought this would be, you know, this would be good enough. The grapes will fall down, that'll be fine. But then I thought, what if all of these, um, the individual the layers of grapes fell at a slightly different time? Like if it fell more naturally, like, and then had a bit more of a, a spring and a, mm. a jiggle to it? And I thought, I might try that with... Um, using my mask tool, which is just using your pen tool, and if you draw over any comp um, with a pen tool, it'll mask it as a default. Mm -hmm. So if I select, you know, if I just click around this scrape, it'll select, it'll just view um, that layer. So, so I've got one grape there, and I'll duplicate it, and I've got another grape on this layer, and then if I... You're not duplicating the element there, you're duplicating the shape of the selection? Is no, that right? and here I'm... Those are, um, it's the same. It's here. I'm, du I'm duplicating uh, the, um, the the layer. Right. Um, you can, if I have the mask selected and I press Command D, it'll duplicate the mask. But if you've just got the layer selected, it'll right. duplicate that layer. Okay. And then I'm just selecting the mask from that layer and moving it um, down to the next grape. So I've got three different layers um, of this of comp, um, all with a uh, masking on a different part. You can see that one's clipping the next few grapes here. So I'll shift that. And then if I just offset these by a few frames, moving them on the timeline, if you play it back, they have this little, um, they're doing the same animation, but just doing it a few frames after each other. So mm. it has this little springy element. And then if we do that for all the layers, it looks like that. So it's got a lot more, oh, cool. you know, bounce and flavor. Mm. And it's, you know, like similar to you know, After Effects, you can just sort of Similar thing you can do in Photoshop. You can just like you're coming with problems. Like, how do I find a hack solution to this? Like, how right. do I get the grapes to bounce? I've already animated this. If I just mask out the layers, and and it'll look good. Um, pre comped and that maybe that'll work. So now as it comes down, the grapes flop flop down here. Beautiful. And again, yeah, we we're talking about this before, but just that attention to detail. There's lo there's minor little things. There's no way I would ever pick that up by itself. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, you've got multiple grapes happening and you're doing these little subtle animation tweaks to make everything feel a little bit more authentic. Yeah. Um, over time just makes you think, oh, wow, there's so much happening in this animation. There is. And that's like, an animator's life is you know, in all the details. Like, the magic happens in the keyframes, just filling the timing. And I think we've made a lot of bumper that. stickers today. Animator's yeah. life is in the keyframes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not bad. That's, that's great. All right. Just on the, on Wonderful. the front. Right. Absolutely fantastic. Um, there was a question. Um, some of the guys in the chat room were talking about a book. I'm wondering if you'd read it. Um, the Animator's Survival Kit by Richard Williams. Have you read that? Yes, I have. Oh, uh, you have? Yeah, it's a it's cool. a good book. There's like if you look up animation books, there's like probably like five that are like really important. There's not an awful lot of books about animation because you know it's not really a, a book. Thing. You can't are really they read flick books? much. <laughs> they're, not, they're, they're actually in, in the Imitation of Life, the Disney one that has heaps of flick books. Oh, does it? Like okay. all different sections. Yeah, it's got lots of those. That's um, fantastic. It's a big book, so it's hard to flick. It's really heavy. It's a massive book. Yeah. Um, yes, I've read that. That is more to do with less than, you know, keyframe-based After Effects work. That was done for people, like, animating. I think that was written maybe in the late 80s, 90s, I mm -hmm. believe, by the the guy who made um, um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Oh, wow. So okay. it's really, like, he knows his stuff, and he's, like, lots of interviews with awesome people and great tips there. Mm. But it's more about traditional animation, frame by frame, where you're drawing every frame, which right. I do a little bit of, but most of my work's with you working with um, shapes and, um, and after tracks. But yeah, thoroughly recommend that book. Do you have it, another recommendation? Another book? Um, you think of off the top of your those two are probably the best. If you're, um, yeah, are they, they're really good for learning animation. Even if you just work in After Effects, like, and it doesn't seem like that that's it's that relevant to you, like learning that stuff, it improved my, uh, my work, I think, significantly knowing oh, the traditional skills. Like, even though I'm not drawing frame by frame, just mm. the knowledge they used is, you know, still um, applies. Like the um, principles of animation are still is true today. Oh, that's great. Batman. That's excellent. That's fantastic. Um, so we're kind of getting towards the end. We're running a little bit over time, but that's okay because we've gone through so much, yeah. so much stuff. Um, something that we like to ask. Uh, there's been a lot of questions about animation. Um, yeah. 
in the chat room today. So maybe mm -hmm. there's graphic designers that want to get into animation, or maybe you know digital designers that are starting to maybe they're using Adobe XD and they're playing around with transitions. Like I actually really like how this is mm -hmm. kind of working. They want to get started in After Effects, yeah, like, or or any other <laughs> kind of bit of advice. But do you have any kind of advice for people wanting to get into the animation? Or? Yeah, absolutely. I think I'd, anyone that's a designer or illustrator. Like, I thoroughly recommend it. It'll be really intimidating at first because there's lots of panels, there's lots of things going on, lots mm. of effects. Just take it one step at a time, learning, you know, what does the position, keyframe, uh, position property do, the rotation. Yeah. You can ignore all the other stuff. Like Photoshop, there's so much in the software that, you know, it's not relevant to you. Like, I use Photoshop, but also photographers use Photoshop, web mm. designers use it. Like, there's tools for them, but you don't need to worry about those because lots of visual effects and com compositing gets done in After Effects. So there's lots of tools and effects for those that you shouldn't worry about. But mm. also, I think if you're a designer or an illustrator and you want to learn animation, I think the hard you've already done the hardest part. I think learning design and learning illustrator is much, much harder than learning uh, animation or After Effects. I think mm. After Effects and animation is a lot more, it's more of like a, a skill, like it's a, a fit, like a, like a craft, like a, mm. you're learning a, a technique rather than like a conceptual. Um, fades as well and you've got the bonus of you've already got great designs and illustrations to work with yeah it's a lot harder i think learning animation and then trying to learn good design to go with that animation right, afterwards right uh, so i'm fortunate that i managed it i got into animation later that i already studied design and worked as an illustrator for a while mm. um, because yeah like i've learned that why well, spend so much time in the concepting phase now i've learned to spend more time designing before i even get on the tools because mm. when you first start i just want to just want to get into after effects make yeah. the shapes move and make it make it you know really look fun and dance but um but if you've got you know if your design's bad like if there's it's not a good design it, no matter how well you animate it it's not going to be good it's like bad foundation absolutely yeah. i'd rather have a better design with minimal animation mm. like a great design with minimal animation than you know a bad design with fantastic animation because anyone who sees us they're not going to see the great animation they're going to be distracted by you know the all the the, the bad, poor composition and, right you know, yeah you know like all of that stuff and all that sort yeah of thing. absolutely well, that's excellent. There's been some some great questions. Um, someone's just asking, what was the name of the second book? Uh, I said, I mentioned uh, imitation. Uh, is it imitation of life? Imag imagination of life? Imagination of life. Something illusion of life. Illusion, illusion of, of life. Illusion of life. That's definitely it. Ladies and gentlemen, it. illusion of life. Yeah, but if you look up animation books, there'll be you'll see ten articles of like the top five animation books, right. and those two are going to be number one and number two. Number one and number two, consistently depending on the day. Um, that's fantastic. So uh, where can people find out more about you and more about your work? Uh, people can find out more about me at uh, my website and uh, my Instagram. Probably the best ways to keep up to date. Let's look at my website up here. That's just So we have it on the screen. BenMarriott.com. Yep. Marriott with two R's and two T's. Uh, it'll be in the description or the title of this video, I'm sure. So mm -hmm. you can copy and paste. And the, yeah, so you can see my work there. And then on my Instagram, it's got more, which is... Um, turn off it. Mm, not now. Let's not do notifications <laughs> now. At uh, Ben underscore uh, Marriott underscore. And that's got more of my latest work. If you see a cute little bat, then you know you're in the right yeah, place. Yeah, if you see a bat, you're in the right place. Very good. Excellent. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining the chat. Uh, it's been fantastic having all these questions. It makes the live streams so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we want to be answering your questions. So, so thank you so much. Uh, we actually have a new subscribe function on the website. So if you're at adobeapaclive.com, um, you'll notice there's some subscribe buttons. There's actually three. Um, so take your pick. It all goes to the same place. Um, and if you subscribe to the live streams, just punch in your details. We'll make sure that we get a reminder to you um, just before we're doing every single live stream directly to you just to make sure that you don't miss out next time. Wonderful. And any other questions people have that we can get to, like message me on Instagram. I might do a Q&A like, um, later in the week or something like that on there. But yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Ben, so much for coming on. No, it's my pleasure. It's been great. Um, thanks to you, everybody in the chat room. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks for another Adobe APAC Live. Thanks very much. Thank you very much.